Hey there, welcome back to another video on the channel. This time I want to start talking about the implementation of a crafting system. In this video we're going to implement a simple crafting recipe that's going to be the very basics and really the only thing that's actually necessary for a crafting system. It's going to consist essentially of a list of input items or the materials of the recipe and then a list of output items or the results of actually crafting that recipe. We want to be able to easily create recipes without the need for code, so just like the items, we are going to make these scriptable objects. Like we said, we are going to need a list of items that are going to be consumed when we create the recipe, the materials, and the list of items that we are going to obtain as a result. But a simple list of items isn't enough. We need to know the amount of each material that's going to be consumed and the amount of each result that we are going to obtain. So instead of making lists of items, we are going to need to make lists of an object of another class or struct that has the item and the amount that we are going to obtain or consume. I'll declare this in the same file and it's going to be a struct. Because this is a scriptable object and we want to create crafting recipe assets in the project, we need to add the create asset menu attribute. We also need to add the serializable attribute, which is under the system namespace, to the item amount struct, otherwise it won't show up in the editor. So now let's test this out in the Unity editor. Let's create a new folder called Crafting Recipes. And just like we did for the items, we can go to the right-click menu and choose the Create sub-menu and then choose Crafting Recipe. Now we see that we have two lists here where we can add our materials and our results. We probably don't want to allow negative amounts or zero in the amount variable, so we can optionally add the range attribute to the amount variable in the script. This is a pretty useful Unity attribute that, as the name implies, allows you to restrict a certain variable to be within the range that you specify. In the editor, it even changes the field where you edit the value to have a slider attached to it instead of having to always input the value manually. So now what would be really useful here is a bunch of methods that take in an inventory and help us automatically craft the items by consuming the materials. So we could have a method that just checks if the inventory contains all the materials and their correct amounts, and another method that actually creates the results by consuming the materials. But you guys know I like my code decoupled, and by having methods that receive a variable of type inventory, we are basically making our crafting recipes dependent on the inventory existing. But we would like to create this system to be as independent as possible, so that anybody, even if they have a different inventory system, could still potentially use this for their benefit in their own project. So instead of using the inventory directly, let's create an interface. I'm going to call it iItemContainer and the reason why is because the naming convention for interfaces in C-Sharp is to use an i, short for interface, before the actual name. And then, opening it up in Visual Studio, we can delete pretty much everything that Unity has set as a default because this isn't even a class, it's an interface. So the point of this interface is to allow us to communicate with pretty much anything that can contain items. So for example an inventory, or a loot box, or a chest, or even your bank in an RPG game. So what we need to do here is declare methods that allow us to do exactly that. So we would like methods to check if an item exists in a certain container, to add items to that container, remove them. When declaring methods in an interface, we don't have to define if they are private or public, because they are always automatically public. These are the methods that we are going to use for now, 
We probably want to add some more in the future. For example, a method that actually lets us get the entire list of items that an item container has. But for now, these are just good enough. So let's head over to the inventory class and implement this interface. So interfaces work similarly to class inheritance with the difference that while you can only inherit from a single class, you can implement an unlimited number of interfaces. After adding the iItemContainer interface to the inventory class, Visual Studio tells us right away that the inventory does not implement interface member contains item. So we can just click on the little light bulb here and tell it to implement the interface. And it's basically going to create the method for us, but we still have to write the actual implementation. It just creates the definition. And fortunately for us, because we already had all the other methods, the is full, remove and add item, we don't have to implement them once again because they're already here. And that's exactly what the interface needs. For the contains item method, it's pretty easy. We just need to copy either the remove item or the add item contents. Just paste them in here and we can just delete the line that actually removes the item from the inventory. We just want to know that the item exists. Back in the crafting recipe, we need to change the inventory lines to the I item container interface. Now that I'm thinking about it, the item container interface, besides the contains item method, we also need a method to count the number of items. Let's implement that in the inventory. We're just basically going to copy the contains item method, but instead of returning true or false, we are going to count the number, the number of items that we find. Now in the can craft method, we need to loop through the materials. And for each item amount in the materials list, we need to check if the item container has the same number of items or more and just return true if that's the case for all items. Otherwise, we'll return false. So we are going through each item amount in the materials list and checking if the item container contains an amount of that item that is at least the amount needed for the crafting recipe. As soon as we find one item that does not exist in the needed amount, we can immediately return false because we know that we won't be able to craft the recipe. If we reach the end of this loop, it means that all items were found with a sufficient amount to be consumed for the crafting and so we can return true in that case. For the craft method, first we're going to check if we can craft the item. And if we can, we're going to loop through the materials list once again and just go into the item container and remove item as many times as it's needed for each material in the list. Then we'll do something very similar. But instead of looping through the materials list, we're going to loop through the results. And instead of removing items, we are going to add items. That's it for the crafting recipe basics. I hope you have enjoyed and see you in the next one.